What's good, YouTube? It's your boy D-Riff. Hey, today we got another special video. Today we're going to be reacting to WWE wrestlers who couldn't actually wrestle. There's a lot of wrestlers that couldn't really wrestle. We got people out here that went undefeated and they weren't good. I guess just because they're looking their appearance. We got people out here getting jobs because of their connects. Family members. All these kind of things, but they really couldn't wrestle. And I'm sure y'all know who I'm talking about, because it's one person in particular that I can't stand. And I'm sure y'all know who it is by now. If you follow me, you know exactly who I'm talking about. And if you don't follow me, you'll know here soon, because they might be in this video. But first time, congrats on to make sure I get to hit the thumbs up. Make sure y'all subscribe, man, because we're almost at 5K. And I won't be able to hit that 5K without y'all, man. So make sure y'all subscribe, man. I appreciate all y'all. Let's keep it going crazy. I'm finna get busy, so um, I'm gonna try to upload as much as I can, cause my schedule has changed drastically. Yesterday was my birthday. Guess my age in the chat. Let me know what y'all think. How old do I look? How old do I look? My birthday was yesterday, so to anybody that says happy birthday, thank you. It's okay. It's late. It's okay. Yeah, I didn't know, but thank you. How old do I look? Without further ado, let's get into this video. Wrestle. Number 10, Eva Marie. When Eva Marie debuted in WWE TV in 2013, they still had a habit of pushing female talent that weren't the best in the ring. Now, my WWE's. I was thinking of the other one. Eva Marie, yeah. Eva Marie wasn't good. There's Eva Marie. It's probably going to be mostly divas on here. It was a lot of divas that really couldn't wrestle. But it was also a lot of rest, uh, men that couldn't wrestle. But this is probably going to be mostly divas. Defense, Marie had some major heat from fans, yet when she wrestled, she completely fell apart. Marie was far too green for the main roster and she was exposed when the bell rang. She even spent time in NXT and this did little to offer any kind of significant improvement. Marie was even brought back for a second run during the COVID-19 era and this was a baffling move as Marie offered zero signs of improvement which meant that the second run was ultimately a complete waste of everyone's time. Number nine, the great Kali. Oh my gosh, the great Kali. Don't get me started on this guy. Angelotto, he was nice before he joined WWE. I got a video of great Kali before he joined WWE. Dude was a monster. All right. Dude was athletic. Like, you'll be surprised. I got a video of me reacting to great Kali before he joined WWE. You can watch it after this video. It'll probably be at the end of this video. I'm telling you right now, you're going to be surprised. Arriving in WWE in 2006, the great Kali was positioned as the new arch rival for The Undertaker. Kali looked incredible as he stood over 7 feet tall and WWE offered a great presentation for Kali that made him look like a megastar. The issue was that Kali simply couldn't wrestle. He was put in the WWE ring with elite names such as The Undertaker, Rey Mysterio and Batista, yet these legendary talents couldn't get a passable match out of Kali. Kali had a ton of limitations as a performer, yet this didn't stop WWE from persisting with the Kali push, and in 2007, he would become world champion. This was a world title reign I that not a that. single fan was pushing for, and this reign greatly exposed Kali as it was a sign that Vince McMahon was greatly out of touch in terms of what the overall fan base wanted. It took some time, but WWE eventually moved Kali down the card, and he would spend the rest of his WWE career in more comedic roles. Whilst his in-ring ability was always a problem, he did manage to get somewhat over as a babyface in the later stages of his career, and his popularity and influence on the Indian market for WWE can never be denied. Number 8, Giant Gonzalez. Oh Unfortunately, gosh. WWE have time and time again brought in lousy Kali wrestlers better than to him. work with The Undertaker. And in the what 90s, was that? We have time and time again brought in lousy wrestlers to work with The Undertaker. He didn't even touch him, bro! Look at, look at that. He didn't touch him. Time look at this dude. Time again brought in lousy wrestlers to work with The Undertaker. And in the 90s, they brought in a wrestler known as Jango. That's, that's, oh, I really hope the person I'm talking about is in this video because they do stuff like that. And it makes me, it drives me crazy. He didn't touch him, right? I understand you're selling it, but bro. Gonzalez. Despite having a ton of size, Gonzalez was one of the worst performers The Undertaker's ever shared the ring with, and their matches in 93 were truly atrocious. 
despite the dead man doing his very best to try and deliver a passable match. Speaking to Sam Roberts, The Undertaker spoke honestly about Gonzalez as an in-ring performer, and the dead man stated that the program with him took years off his career. That whole thing took years off my career. I would be in much better shape now if I could have skipped that one program. As physically demanding as it was, it was twice as much the mental strain because you have Brett, Yokozuna going out and having these great matches. Obviously, you want to be mentioned in the same breath as those guys, and it was just not possible. Number 7. The Boogeyman The Boogeyman was thrown onto the main roster with very little training, and he was given a major push almost immediately. The Boogeyman character was unique and it was over with the audience, however, like all supernatural characters, the character had to eventually wrestle. And I don't care nobody say, the Boogeyman is one of the scariest superstars ever. I don't care what nobody say, because I was little when Boogeyman came out, so that kind of gives you an idea of how old I am. But I was kind of, I was, I was younger when the Boogeyman came out, right? So, and then, and then, you know, where I grew up from, you know, people used to make jokes about the Boogeyman being outside, Boogeyman being under the bed and the cars, all that kind of stuff. So, you used to be scared, bro. You used to be scared. Me, I used to be scared of the dark. I'm still kind of scared of the dark. Not because of that. But when I was little, it was definitely because of him. <laughs> I was scared. I was scared of him. I, I could not watch him in the dark at all. I had to turn the lights on. This is where the mystique was shattered. The Boogeyman wasn't at the level WWE all the fans wanted, and his matches with the likes of Booker T and JB. And when I say I'm scared of the dark, no, I'm not saying like, oh, I need a nightlight, like all this kind of stuff. I'm saying like, you're not finna find me walking in the woods by myself in the dark. You're not finna find me doing stuff like that. That's what I mean by I'm scared of the dark. I could walk around my entire house in the dark with no problem. Because I know where everything is. But, like, I don't know. If you if you understand what I'm saying, bro, that's, you understand, bro. If you don't, then you don't. I'm not just saying I'm scared of the dark. Like, I, I'm scared to just be in the dark at all. Like, I turn this light off and I'm scared of being here. Because this is the only light that I have right now in my area. If I turn this light off, I'm going to be scared. No, that's not what I'm saying. Yell were laughable at best. The boogeyman was eventually moved dramatically down the card, and for good reason. <laughs> it was impossible for WWE to book him in high profile feuds if they knew that the end matchup wasn't going to deliver. Having a riveting and engaging gimmick is vastly important in wrestling, yet the in ring work has to be up to par. Names such as Taker, Mick Foley, and Bray Wyatt were a testament to this. Their characters and gimmicks were legendary, yet these men had the ability to deliver a classic in ring product with anyone on their respective roster. Number 6, Nathan Jones. Who is that? It's often been the case in WWE, they see a wrestler and they believe that they will be he the biggest familiar. star on the planet. This opinion is usually formed oh, him? to their appearance and nothing more. And this Wait, was often the that case. was him? But that don't look like him. This opinion is usually formed thanks like to their appearance and nothing more. And this was often the case during the old era of WWE, where Vince McMahon preferred his top guys to look a certain way. In 2003, although wrestlers such as Kurt Angle, Brock Lesnar, Rob Van Dam, and Booker T were all amongst the most push wrestlers in the company, this mindset still firmly existed as WWE debuted oh, Nathan Jones. Let's say who's... Jones had an intimidating look, and although he was insanely green, they debuted him in a program with The Undertaker. This was going to lead to the two teaming at WrestleMania he gives me, 19. He gives me like a test vibe mixed with Ryback. Shortly before WrestleMania 19, they realized that Jones I don't just wasn't really ready remember for him, such a prestigious position, I remember seeing and him. his WrestleMania plans were dropped. Jones would re-debut in the company in late 2003, this time as a menacing heel. This he new thought. heel run led to more ring time, and although he was wrestling names such as Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit, Jones was simply not cut out for the big leagues. Number 5. King Mabel In an attempt to create a new star, oh WWE God. decided to push Mabel in 95. He would win the illustrious King of the Ring and would go on to challenge Diesel at that year's SummerSlam event. strong man right there, boy. King Mabel was subpar in the ring, and when he <laughs> wrestled Diesel at the SummerSlam event, it highlighted all of his... Bro, don't call him King Mabel, bro. We all know his name, bro. Big Daddy V. It's Big Daddy V. Clearly Big Daddy B. V. Or Viscera. Whatever one you want to call him. Whatever one you want to call him. I heard some nasty stories about this man. From Teddy Long. Teddy Long says some nasty stories about this man. If you don't know what I'm talking about, search up Teddy Long interview on Big Daddy V. That man was nasty. But this is Big Daddy V. Ain't no King Mabel. 
And those dudes got to be stupid strong to be lifting this almost 600-pound man. He would win the illustrious King of the Ring and would go on to challenge Diesel at that year's SummerSlam event. King I'd even get him up there. Subpar in the ring, and when he wrestled Diesel at the SummerSlam event, it highlighted all of his flaws, and his in-ring performance was so bad and reckless that Vince McMahon almost fired him on the spot. Mabel would have numerous runs in the company, including runs as Viscera and Big Daddy V, yet he was often criticized during these runs as his in-ring output was consistently failing to hit the mark. Number 4. Heidenreich Heidenreich was just another larger-than-life superstar that WWE paired with The Undertaker, and just like other names on this list, Heidenreich's in-ring work was terrible. The Heidenreich, Heidenreich character was an interesting one as he would often come down to the ring wearing a straight jacket, and his alliance with Paul Heyman should have been a recipe for success. Unfortunately, when the bell rang, he often looked nervous and he failed to have a good match. He had somewhat more success as a babyface as part of his new version of the Legion of Doom, yet even still, fans still called out his in-ring work, which showed little to no improvement. Number 3. Vladimir Kozlov Following oh, WrestleMania him. 24, WWE debuted Vladimir Kozlov, and from his first match, it was evident that WWE saw dollar signs. Before fans knew it, Kozlov was pushed into the main event scene, and this saw Kozlov enter into a feud with Triple H and Jeff Hardy. This push was completely unwarranted as the fans weren't reacting with the excitement when Kozlov's music hit. Most of his matches were lifeless squash matches. With Kozlov entering into a few with top names, this meant that he was now wrestling longer matches. And this was a massive detriment to Kozlov, and he looked complete that Kozlov wasn't going to be the menacing top star he wanted. And he eventually admitted defeat and decided instead to place Kozlov in a comedic tag team with Santina Morella. Number 2. Ahmed Johnson the WWE had every Ooh. reason to push Ahmed Johnson, as his WWE arrival came at the time when new stars were badly needed. Why is he so greasy? And the more WWE pushed Johnson, the bigger reactions toward him seemed to get. Sadly, Johnson's in-ring work was at a questionable level, and he was known for being incredibly reckless in the ring. It's often said that it's vital that wrestlers trust each other in the ring, yet numerous wrestlers had issues with just how stiff and brutal Johnson could be within the squared circle. WWE legend Ted DiBiase summed up these issues with Johnson on his podcast by stating, Big guy, great appearance. Obviously Vince McMahon was going to push him because he was the size he was. It looked like he did, but you know, he wasn't a great worker. In other words, he had to have somebody on the other side of the ring who could lead him. Johnson eventually exited the company in 98 and there were numerous reasons as to why the departure happened. Yet ultimately Johnson found himself in WCW where he unfortunately fell into a pit of obscurity. And number one, the Ultimate Warrior. The Ultimate Warrior is number one. All right, so the person that I was talking about isn't on here. She's um family members with the um famous Heart Foundation. Her name is Natalia. Natalia Hart. Can't stand Natalia. She makes everything look bad. She's gotten a lot better in the past two years, but she's still not that good. I get angry every time I watch her fight. I don't like it. But I can see Ultimate Warrior, but I just didn't think he was going to even be on this list because Ultimate Warrior wasn't that good to me. Hulk Hogan in the 80s wasn't that good to me. I mean, it's a lot of wrestlers that's, that wasn't that good to me that were like overhyped. Andre the Giant. I thought Goldberg would be on here, but he's not. But it's whatever. Yeah. It always leads to a ton of discourse whenever a wrestling fan claims that the Ultimate Warrior couldn't wrestle. On the surface, Warrior couldn't wrestle. He was extremely limited as a performer, and numerous wrestlers have called Warrior out for his limitations. However, limitations aside, Warrior still had the ability to tell an excellent, captivating story with his matches. Matches against the likes of Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage were tremendous. And yes, this was in part thanks to the abilities and aura of the two aforementioned names. Yet Warrior still did his part in the respective matchups. Current WWE star that? Gunther summed up Warrior's abilities the best when he appeared on the bump. He's a showman. He's not an athlete, not a professional wrestler. He's a showman. And there you have it, folks. That's tough! But hey, if y'all got any other videos you want me to write to in particular, let me know down below in the comments, man. I appreciate y'all for pulling up, man. Like I always say, like the video, subscribe if you're new. It's your boy D-Rib, man. I'm out.